Hi, everyone, and welcome back to How Love Bites. I am here with the guy on my left, or is that the guy on your right, depending on if you're looking at this through a mirror. Uh, and that is his name is Steve, and he's my co-host. And we're going to be uh, we're going to be chatting a little bit about something today. Um, we are going to be actually Steve's going to do the opening on this one, and uh, we're going to talk about the speed of relationships. You know, when do you kick it up a notch? You know, if you're going to do like an emerald or something, you know, like guys, you know, he takes it up a notch. Um, we'll talk about that, okay? And and um, like to get your feedback. Uh, you got a phone number in there. If you'd like to call the phone number, you'll find it on the website of howlovebites.com. Uh, there's a phone number there to call. So, and if you'd like to give a call right now, the number is 480-389-6020. So that's uh, 480-389-6020 if you'd like to place a phone call. So let's get right to it. My brother, do it. Dennis, thank you, and thanks for having me on the show. Um, this is a, a good one to do, and this is kind of a subject near and dear to my heart. So this show is a little different because uh, I'm going to be asking you some questions, and I'm going to look for some advice, and I think our audience will benefit from that, but I actually do really, we want to hear from the audience. Um, on YouTube, you can comment, or again, www.howlovebites.com, Facebook, Instagram, the whole deal. So today, I want, I want to get intimate. I know you issued the sexual harassment memo to me, but I want to get intimate with you. And what I mean by that is <laughs> he's shaking his head. Right. I want to I want to I want to I want to ask you some questions. So, you know, you've been doing this longer than I have. We're talking about dating over 50. And, you know, I'm back in the fray after a long and productive marriage. It gave me wonderful children, but I'm back in the fray, as they say, for a couple of years here. And I'm still getting my sea legs, my brother. I'm still getting my sea legs. And my question is, you know, how, how fast do you go? Because um, I know everyone has different goals, but and it doesn't matter whether you meet online or through speed dating or you bump into someone's grocery cart, whatever. You know, meet them at church, meet them wherever. But I wanted to see in your experience and hear our audience's feedback, how do you know when to take it up a notch? You know, how do you know when you're going too fast? How do you know, in my case, it would be the lady. How do you know when the lady is ready for the next step, right? Because we're in a different space here. We're in our 50s or older. We're more mature. I'd like to think we're a little wiser. Um, our objectives are different. We're not looking to have children and populate the earth. Um, now it's just about love. And, and as you said before, and love bites. You can get hurt. You can bite people. You can get bitten. Um, the objectives are just all different. And I, I just feel like I am a strange man in a strange land. Um, and I just want to see, give me some advice on this topic generally. And then what are some signs that you're going too fast? We've talked about love bombing. We've, we've talked about some narcissistic personalities. You know, there's certain, some things where it's unnaturally fast. I'm going to rule that out. Psychological issues with some of these folks. But how do you know you're just, you're normal folks and you got a good lady and you're a good guy or, Vice versa, it's going too, too fast, you know, it's too fast, it's too much. You know, sometimes we hear words like that, they're indicators, too much, too fast, yeah. mm -hmm. overwhelmed. You know, True. All... So what say you, kind sir, on this subject? What advice Oops. would you have for me? Well, there's a brain cider right there. Yo, it's one want... question, it's one question, yeah. but it has 24 subparts. No, you know, it's got a lot of facets to it because... Uh, I think I'm, I'm looking at three different answers right out of the box. One is, uh, how fast do you go as, as Steve? Okay. Or how fast does, um, she go as whatever her name is. Okay. Sue or Janie or, yeah. Yeah. Whatever it is. And then how fast do you go together? And do you go, do you go together at the same speed? Uh, yeah. you hope to. But yeah. it, it's not always, I don't think it's always necessary, necessarily the case. Um, I, I think, uh, 
I think that's kind of something that's almost implied and it really isn't up for a discussion. It isn't something that is communicated, but you know, um, there's always, there's always some member of the team, um, the relationship team that'll say things like, well, gee, do you think it's, it's about time that maybe, maybe you get off the dating site, you know, <laughs> and that's always a favorite. And they're, and I'm sure that they're the ones that have always, or in a situation like that, have gotten off already. And for whatever reason, it might be just frustration. And it might be good timing to make it look like, hey, I'm off the site, pal. Okay, what about you? What's your excuse? So I think that seems to be one of the issues that comes up a lot, is the dating site. When do we leave the dating site? When do we get off? The dating site can we get off can we get off of the site too early and give them the wrong impression you know or, sure. or that could that could scare them too yeah or maybe right correct or maybe not get off the dating site early enough for them to believe that you're serious that you're you're committed you you want to be you want to have a commitment so what do you do in that case wow well i think that's truly something something that has to be discussed by both of you uh, I do, but I think that as you you start to progress in in a relationship, I think that it's important to set boundaries. Okay, I think boundaries are another golden key and a golden ticket to relationships, yeah. and and boundaries should be discussed. And I, I don't want to say as early as possible, but when when you think you're person that you're with and that you're having a great time with is um, exceeding your boundaries or, or just stepping over your boundaries on some things. I think, I think it's important that you bring that, you bring that up. And uh, if everybody's following in within everybody's parameters and boundaries, um, I think you'll find that the relationships will automatically move forward. So there's kind of like, uh, you know, the governor comes off the gas pedal and now you got a full throttle so and you set it where you want to set it it's like cruise control you know sometimes you got to take it off to get around that truck yeah. so i don't know it's stupid but no, you know you know what i mean it's not and uh actually you said boundaries we have no affiliation with this book but i would recommend everyone in our viewing and listening audience that there's a book called boundaries i'm forgetting the name of the author i've read it it's fantastic yeah, it's a fantastic yeah. book. It's really, if you're, I would say it's a must read. If you're going to be in the dating over 50 thing, maybe you're new to it. Maybe you're a widow, widower, divorced, or just single. Uh, boundaries are really important. And uh, it's a really good point, too, because, I mean, I'll just give you a hypothetical. I mean, what if there's a lady named, you know, Janie or Sarah or Dahlia? For example, um, that could be a name that would come to mind. And then what if that person, you know, they could have a couple of kids. I mean, they might be older. They might be, I don't know, 21 or 17, something like that. That person is mm -hmm. in the dating scene and they're back into it, but clearly they have some boundaries, you know. Um, so you would have to have a conversation with that person about it because clearly you're not the daddy and you're not looking to come in and be the daddy. Um, but that would be a good example. What's their familial relationship? You know, what, what do they have kids? Do they have people they're responsible for? Are they truly free? You know, where are they chained down? So knowing the boundaries on that, because the last thing I would want to do in that situation would be, you know, again, to try to, I don't know, take over someone's household or be the baby daddy or whatever. Now, if you date someone, they got a two-year-old, maybe that's a different story and you get married down the road, maybe you do kind of become the daddy. But that, that would all be, those are all the boundaries that would be talked about. So I think boundaries, that's, that's a really good one. What about, um, what are, what are some signs? Have you, what are, like yeah, go ahead. A yeah. little bit you said. Yeah. Um, because you're talking about children. Sure. And you're talking about children in relationships. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's, it's real important to let your partner know, and uh, and of course from your heart, I'm not saying fabricate this right. or make this up as you go forward or go along, but let your partner know that their kids will always come first. You'll understand Absolutely. when they place their kids first. Absolutely. Okay, because that, that's something that scares someone who has children. Yeah. 
that are attempting to get into a relationship because they're thinking, do, do they have to put their kids second or do they have to put their kids behind you, say, for instance? And I think it's always good to reassure them and, and to make it stick, too. I mean, make that come from your heart, not just don't blow smoke up. And, and the same from you. you know what if you, like if, if I have a 16-year-old, yeah, I'm going to say it up front. I think my daughter is my first princess. I, She's got to come first, you know? Yeah, yeah. And I, I'm sure it's never going to come to a point where, well, it's either them or me, man. Well, so what do you want to you do? Say, you say that, but I've heard, I, it, I've heard it ruining relationships, you know? I, I know. Arguments will produce all sorts yeah. of horrible uh, sick twisted yeah. things you know you can't you can't prevent it but i think that setting those boundaries okay ahead of the game give me it takes a lot of the pressure off them mm-hmm. and i think it allows them to be more un, uninhibited and to move more freely in the relationship yeah. when that when they know that um they know where they can go how far they can go and uh and that um, the things that they cherish in a boundary will be um, adhered to, you know, that it'll be uh, acknowledged. Right. So, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, I, that was great. And actually, you just said something. You've talked before about cherished moments. Um, you know, let's talk about that for a second, because implicit in the question of how fast a relationship moves, um, You've said before, it's really important, and I think it's good to talk about here, about just kind of living in the moment too, right? I mean, you have to have an eye towards the future, but you've, talk, you've talked That's about true. having these kind of cherished moments, and it's a little sappy, you old, you old romantic, you, you, you are a well, son of a gun, you, but um, You're lucky I'm not thank God, thank God so I remoted boy. in from oh. the How Love Bite studio in Fountain Hills, so I'm not next to you, but um, you have talked about those yeah. cherished moments and, and it's so, you know, it's important to protect those, but that's also a boundary. You know, there's boundaries aren't just, Hey, I've got my kids or my job. It could be, you know, uh, Hey, kind of during the week I'm doing this or my Monday through Thursday is horrible or don't talk to me in the mornings. You know, the boundary could be time of day. Like you said, you got to talk about it. Sure. All right. So, yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. I think that's good stuff. I want to ask another question. So it's related. My next question to you would be, are there some keywords? Are there some things you've heard from a lady in your case? I'm going to presume that it was a lady that you would have been dating. So, uh, but oh, I don't judge, man. Hey, whatever. So, um, yeah, I'm going to presume you've been dating ladies. Have you heard some, are there some keywords or phrases that you've heard from people that make you think like, uh, I'm going too fast or I'm going too slow. Are there certain things? Um, we've talked about body language, you know, and all that, but what, what are some things that people say if something is moving too fast? What in your experience? Wow. That's, that's a very, that's a very good question. I, I think, um, I think one of the things that I would say people would have a tendency to say is maybe, Maybe we have to talk about that sometime, you know. But they're so they're 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 not they're not ready yeah. to discuss it right. and talk about it. But what they'll say is, uh, you know, maybe maybe at some point we'll get we'll get to that point. And and I, I do feel that women sometimes are more apt to say things like, you know, yeah. it's moving a little fast for me, and, and I, I I don't know if I'm ready for that yet, you know. So we're guys. Um, I don't think guys are ready to say that. Don't make some excuses. Yeah, it's a very good point. Um, because they want, to leave all the doors. they want to leave all the doors and windows open. You know, they don't want to shut her down, you know, and they want to keep that open just in case she's ready to, you know, start lighting. I, I, and I think it's a, something. I think that's a very good point. Yeah. We've talked about there are certain things that maybe sometimes women do more. But in this case, I would probably knock the male gender a little bit more because I think you're right. I think women by their nature, I don't know if they just le- learned it earlier or whatever, but I think they're a little bit better at saying, whoa, cowboy, you know, or time out in the field or, hey, yeah, we'll talk about that. Yeah. Like you just said, guys, we're used to, uh, I don't know what it's from, how we're created or whatever, but I think you're right. I think we, we leave options open yeah. and and I don't think we, we say that very often. Hopefully as we get older, we do. Um, hopefully we get a little wiser, but I think you're exactly right. In this case, I think the women get a little more credit for being a little more, 
honest and direct in this space than the guys. The guys are, you know, I don't know. Mm-hmm. If they, if, well, if they, want, they want to be a player. If they want to be a player, if they want to make sure they got a date for Friday and Saturday or whatever, they're not going to. They want to keep their social calendar full. I don't know. It's a little slimier, I guess. What are some other, are there some other expressions? I mean, a couple yeah. things. I when I've talked to people, I've heard like no. I'm overwhelmed. Uh-huh. I, I've heard guys telling me that women have said, "I'm overwhelmed. It's too much," or they'll just say too fast. But are there other ones that are just they're not direct words, but they should be similar to your other phrase that they should be a heads up. Well, you know, something we discussed too is when people are uh, women. I have a tendency to say that um, oh, yeah. they want to keep you in a friend zone. Okay. They want to let you know you're in a friend zone. You know, Jimmy. the friend zone is. And my name is. Yeah. By the way, the my friend name zone is. is the yeah. friend zone is not That's the end zone, thing. Dennis. The friend That's zone is not the end zone. That is not where. No, 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 right. It's not. It's, not, it's, it's, not, not, a good it's not a good zone to be in. It really is not. And especially if they want to turn you in to. A friend, a, a girlfriend with a penis. And that's not a good space to have to uh, be in. Director, he you know, did it again. Ladies and gentlemen, I know. Director, the director God, is God, waving God. his hands and screaming. Send him, go out, but but your, point, your point is valid. I sent him out for a smoke. And so, yeah, yeah. But um, that is not a good place to be. But we also talked about some place you touched on where it was yeah. the cherish moments or whatever, which... I have oh, there we go. More precious, moments. precious moments. I thought that was a doll. In which you're basically in being in the reality of the moments yeah. that we have before us right now. Yeah. Because that's truly all that exists. If we're going to go anywhere, we definitely do not want to be going backwards. Oh, my gosh. There's nothing but horror and terror. And, you know, I mean, if we have somewhere between 80 to 90 thousand thoughts every day for most people 70 to 80 thousand of those thoughts are about the past so what we need to do is operate in that in those precious moments and then if we want to start establishing a future and we want to start bringing good things to us then think about the meditating and getting out in that quantum field where all the thoughts and all the energy is and uh, it's, it's kind of, it's the same kind of energy that you have when you think of someone yeah. and they call you on a telephone. What? How is that possible? That's and then you pull it off and you think, eh, yeah, well, you know, things happen. Yeah. Next time, bing, it happens again. But it only seems to happen with that one person or maybe with a couple of people connected. only. Yeah. Not everyone. Because you're reaching that energy. You're sharing that energy's place space and time with them okay because everything around us vibrates even though it looks solid everything's in motion energy is all around us at every given time yeah. we're energy we're electromagnetic you know and yeah. that's why things like chemistry happen with people you know you've got this chemical reaction with someone you know of course desire plays a part but and even there's even studies now that have revealed kissing someone isn't just how great and how well they kiss, but how the <laughs> bacteria come together and actually shake hands and go, hey, where you been all my life? You know, there's a the bacterial connection. It's weird. It's in the American Journal of Medicine. Take a look at the report. I was stunned. But there is a bacterial exchange in a kiss that either is a yay or a nay. Because I don't know if you've ever kissed someone. And maybe you think, well, this isn't that bad, but why is it just not right? And then you do it again, and you feel, you feel uh, boy, it's really iffy, you know. And then you get to one person that probably, I'm not going to say kisses like a mule, but all of a sudden, man, that wasn't too bad. <laughs> you know, they could, eat, they could eat like a, an apple through a picket fence. I mean, so bad, you know. So, no, I'm just kidding, of course. Yeah. But anyway, that's pretty- Okay. So yeah, those are some those are some good indicators. So, and well, then yeah. I think you know the reality is in an ideal world we tell each other all these things, but there are people we have to be mindful of their personality types. You know their personality typing. Are they direct? Are they indirect? Are they extroverted? Are they introverted? Are they 
you know, what's their history? A lot of people have been traumatized. They've been scared. I think all those things, somehow you have to know those are all factors because what you might interpret as a lack of response or either way, positive or negative, you know, really has to be looked through the filter of, of what that, that person is. I, and I'll be honest with you. I think that's why this is hard. I think people are incredibly complex machines. Um, I had a doctor tell me that one time, and it's just so true. We are complex machines. I think you made a great point about um, positivity and thought and all that. The reality is, um, I believe we were created by God, but of course we've been around for, you know, we've also evolved and adapted. And so a lot of the things you're talking about come from things like fight or flight and, and protection and and all that, and and I think it takes a really uh, conscious effort to be positive and be clear, um, you know, in in the moment and present. I think your advice on that is really uh, good, because, and it's one of the things people say all the time now, right? Is live in the moment, be present, wow. you know, um, presenteeism, um, you know, not focus too much on the past or the future. I think um, I just think there's a lot of ways to indicate it. I guess the thing I would encourage people to be is just is to be honest but gentle, right? You know, you you said sometimes people say it's kind of like not no but not now. Like, oh, we'll talk about that in the future. There's ways to save things, say things. You could hit someone with a hammer, but you can wrap a mm-hmm. pillow around it first, you know. So I, I honestly I can tell you know yeah. hearing myself talk, you're giving me good advice. I haven't entirely figured this out. I don't know if any of us have entirely figured it out. Is there anything else that comes to mind for you um, in terms of, uh, in our case, the ladies putting their hand on the throttle, you know, slow down, speed up. Do you have any other, you know, thoughts about when that's happened? Well, um, I think you've got to, you've got to allow for some of it to be determined by the energy mm. that's created between the both of you two, you know that that um, that combination of um, you know your desires and your compatibilities yeah. and your values and all you got to kind of let yeah. that steer the boat, let that be the rudder, you yeah. know, and at least that'll provide some direction. As far as the speed goes, hard to really dictate that or how to, how to determine, mm. you know, is it time to kick it up a little bit? I really think that if you're in a relationship and you don't know when to kick it up a little bit, and um, I, I think then yeah. you've got to you've got to go back some steps because I think it's going to be just something innate, and you're just going to know when when it's time to do that. Yeah. But of course, if you're love bombing and grandiosing, um, that's right. For those people, they're never going to know when it's time because they're, they have different objectives. They don't have a normal objective. Yeah that regular, if you want to call them, normal people have that are the same thing to right. establish a life story well, I th- I, or a love story at some point. Yeah, you know, and, and we're going to talk about the that dark triad, which is, it you know, talks about some of these personality traits that's coming up in a show. We've talked a little bit about narcissism and love bombing already. But uh, back to what you just said, I think one of the most liberating words I ever heard from someone, and it was in a business context, it wasn't uh, in a relationship context, but I think it applies here, is... We will know, you know, um, when we get to that point, we will know there's something liberating about that. Yeah. And maybe I overthink things sometimes, too. Uh, but there's something liberating about saying to your partner or hearing from your partner, you know what, babe, we'll know. Let's not worry about it. When, when we get to that point, we will know. And that demonstrates, uh, like you talked about, energy, but also just kind of faith exactly. and faith in the process and uh you know, these are all things that are easy for us to talk about, but they're not necessarily mm-hmm. uh, easy to do in real life. And I think men and women, uh, men and women really, we talked about right. before, they misread each other all the time. You know, one wants X, the other one wants Y, or they both want X, but one thinks they want mm-hmm. Y. Um, we're wired differently, my brother. We are wired differently. Uh, thank yeah. God, but we are wired different. Oh, we are. Yeah. We just yeah. Mark- he was that far off base, right? But you know, I think I think when somebody comes up and and uh, you know they they do have uh, you know questions about how a relationship's going and maybe the direction yeah. of the relationships. Yeah. Man, get to the table. Sure, 
Okay, you know, because you're both in this together. Just say, hey, listen, I want to talk to you about some stuff. You know, you know, am I performing well for you? Am I doing anything that upsets you, or can I do something differently? Yeah. Yeah. And then let them, well, you know, share what their thoughts are, what their concerns are. So yeah. I think as long as you meet, you're not afraid to talk to each other. That's where I think people get in the biggest trouble. Is because they're they're not comfortable enough. They're afraid that, well, if I say that, maybe it'll jeopardize the relationship and they'll get the wrong idea. You know, there's always, you're always reserved. And so you can never come yeah. transparent. You can't come, you can't yep. show up. You know, show up with who you really are. Show up together, chew it up, talk it out like your little kids or whatever, you know. <laughs> if you got to bash one in the nose, give them a little part, tap, but you know, the rest of it whatever, is really but, but talk about it. Well, Dennis, don't, don't, hey, the, um, this is, this is, brother, okay. Woo. Sometimes uh, things just, so hey, the brain this has been very thought. helpful. Boom. Uh, this is very and good boom. advice. I think you yeah. have. we talked about yeah. some indicators. We've talked about some other shows that are coming up again. This one with this show was a little more, this is a little more emotional, a little more psychological and just a discussion. We don't know that there's right or wrong answers. So please go to howlovebites.com. Uh, submit your comments and questions. We'd love to be able to address them in a follow-up show on this. Uh, click like and subscribe on YouTube. Follow us on Facebook, uh, Instagram, Twitter. All that stuff has come online. And uh, we're enjoying this. We're having a good time. Uh, we, we, You know, it's funny. You think you know a lot, and then you realize how much you don't know. So uh, enjoy it out there. As you always say, be safe. Dennis, thanks for having me on the show. Thanks for letting me tee this one up. And uh, and, and I appreciate it. And we will most definitely see for you next time. Yes. My brother. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks, everyone.